Welcome to our annual webinar on how to match a series. Every year we bring the attendings, residents, match students, and we discuss various aspects of the USMLE match. Whether you are an applicant who's applying for the first time, uh, whether you are a repeat applicant, high scores, low scores, old year of graduation, we try to cover each of these uh, scenarios. We believe every IMG can match and so can you. Special thanks to all our speakers who helped us and who participated in this series. Uh, watch on and you'll definitely find some useful tips as you prepare for the upcoming match. For the ease of viewership, we have divided this into seven uh, videos. Uh, make sure to watch uh, all of these, subscribe to our YouTube channel and all the best for the upcoming match. So in the first series, we talk about the important considerations for match. What does it take for you to match? We also talk about the mistakes that our speakers have seen over the years in personal statement, CV, and even in the interview. Good morning, good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, our annual webinar. This is uh, something we do every year. As we kick off the next season, we pretty much uh, bring, bring out the learnings uh, from the previous year, we invite our math students and our panelists uh, to see what worked in the last year and uh, how you guys can improve what are the tricks and trips for next year. So that's one. Uh, the other thing we like to do is there is a lot of information always floating around on the social media, Facebook and others, and some of it is legitimate, others is too confusing. So. We always take this opportunity to present to you the right kind of perspective, what you need to know uh, to be able to prepare for the match. <coughs> so that's the, the goal. And uh, for this webinar, uh, you should be able to listen in uh, using your computer, iPhone kind of microphone. You will be in listen-only mode. And uh, we'll take the questions at the end. We'll be here for about uh, 90 minutes to two hours. So hold off on your questions till the end. Uh, we have a packed session, so it you know kind of disturbs the flow. Uh, so if you can hold on to your questions, you can always use the chat window. But we'll be taking up the questions uh, towards the end. Uh, so what we'll end up doing is uh, after the introductions, we will talk about uh, the considerations for, for IMGs, what, what are the things you should be aware of, what are the things you should be working on uh, for the 2019 match, and mm -hmm. then we'll have um, a lot of panel discussion. So uh, different speakers will talk about different aspects that they have gone through, that they have seen, that they have experienced. Uh, hopefully that will be of uh, help to you. And finally, you know, some of the interview experience, what they found in the interview trail. Okay, some, one of the speaker needs to either go on mute or I think I'm hearing an echo. I don't know who it is. Uh, all right, uh, let's go around our virtual room first. So my name is Pawan Khera. You may have seen me on some of our YouTube videos. Uh, I'm a faculty at Carnegie Mellon. I teach healthcare analytics and uh, we've been doing this for several years now. So let me just go around the room. Uh, Rahul, do you want to go next? Yeah, good morning, everyone, and, or good evening for people who are outside. Um, my name is Rahul Panal. I'm a gastroenterologist. Um, you know, we've been doing this for a few years now, and the goal is really to, you know, create a environment of learning and an environment where you can refine your skills so that, you know, it, it's a very daunting task. We've all been through it. When you come from, you know, your home country, wherever you are, or applying for residency in the United States is, is, is quite challenging. So um, we're here to help you and, you know, hope, hope you find this helpful. So, uh, we'll let the others speak. All right, uh, let's move on. I think, Rawali, you're on phone, correct? Yes, I'm here. Okay, can you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm 
I'm, my name is Javali. I am a CGY1 right now. I crashed into residency one year ago today. And uh, I'm here in Chicago. And I'm excited to meet you all this season. Thank you. Guys, there is some echo. So those, on, those of you on phone may want to check for echo. Chinta, uh, uh, why are you doing next? I'm just going by the screen. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chinta. I'm from India. I recently matched into University of uh, Arkansas Internal Medicine Program in Staples, and I'm really excited to be here and talking to you all. And, well, I know I was on the other side last year, so it's, it's real, I'm really happy to be here and, and talking to you all. So we'll be, we'll be here to help you all. Thank you, Chanta. Uh, Sahib, uh, why don't you go next? Hello. Yep, we can hear you. So, yeah. Hi, guys. I'm Saheb. Uh, first of all, thank you, Pawan, for doing this. Uh, and as Chinta was saying, we've been on the other side so much. It's like a different experience being doing something and telling others what needs to be done. So I'm Saheb. I went into the match as a, a three-year-old graduate. I graduated three years back. And this was my first match. And I matched with quite like it was everything went smooth and I matched into Maricopa Medical Center in Phoenix so I'm really happy that I'm moving in the same city as Pavan so <laughs> I'll be here to answer them okay. if you have any thank you thank you for uh, moving to Phoenix Sahib appreciate it uh, <laughs> yeah. Snehal why don't you go next sure uh, hi everyone I'm Snehal Bankur I'm from India and um, I'm a repeat applicant, but finally this was the year for me, and I'm Ash in internal medicine in New York. I'm very happy to be here, and thank you, U.S. Medicati and Pavan, for the opportunity to talk to everyone today. Thank you. Uh, Hani, uh, why don't you go next? Hello, my friends. Can you hear me, Pavan? Yes. Yeah, hi. This is Hani Eskers. I'm an international medical graduate from Egypt. I graduated in 2012. And um, I'm very happy to be in the uh, Cohen team. I was a student last year, and it uh, was so helpful for us to be in therapy. It was very, really, very, very helpful for starting from the CV and the PS and the interviews, steps, everything. And um, I'm very happy that I'm going to try to transfer our experience to you guys this year. Thank you. Uh, Hani, I think there is some problem with your phone, so you may want to just, there's a, some echo and I think some of the uh, audience was having a problem, but uh, let's move on. Uh, Anshit, uh, <coughs> introduce. Thank you, Pavan, and uh, hello guys, my name is Anshit Bharat. I'm from uh, Meerut, India, Mangal Pandey's hometown, and I recently married into internal medicine um, in Indiana, and I'm here to help you guys get your dream residency. Excellent. Uh, Ashley, uh, you want to go? If you can, are you on the phone now? Sure. I am on the phone. Can you guys hear me? Uh, it's a bit, uh, there's a, some of an echo, but uh, I, I think we'll be fine. Okay. Fine too. Got it. Hi, um, my name is Ashley Sobel. I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona, and I, I did my MD and PhD at Duke University in North Carolina. Um, I matched in pediatrics at UW, so I'll be starting as an intern at Seattle Children's this fall. And I'm really excited to share kind of my insight from what, from recent residency interviews with you all. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, Liti, I see that you have also joined. So uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Liti. Uh, I'm from India. Um, <laughs> I went to anesthesiology at the University of Minnesota this year. Um, I hope I can help you. Thank you. Uh, and Nikita, I see you have joined. I've uh, given you video access. Uh, so you want to introduce? Okay, maybe she's don't, not joined the phone yet. Uh, so let us know when you uh, join. Uh, why don't we move ahead? So for those of you who have absolutely no idea and just clicked on the registration link who don't know anything about us, uh, <coughs> Uh, we've been uh, helping IMGs for the last uh, four or five years. Uh, you know, we, you can 
get all the statistics on our website, the programs, the number of students, the specialties. Uh, I'm not going to go into that because uh, today is not for that. Uh, but we do have a very extensive knowledge of the U.S. medical system. Uh, you know, our all panelists, they are very well versed with it. We understand the challenges that IMGs face, and we have a very customized approach uh, uh, as we help our students uh, through the match process. Uh, here's our website. You can, uh, you know, peruse that at your leisure. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel um, that will give you a lot of information, a lot of tips, more than 50, 60 mm -hmm. videos. So, uh, you know, do subscribe to it. That would be uh, one place to go for most of the things uh, for match. Uh, we are starting a blog. It's live now. So, as you can imagine, uh, you know, the blog is uh, Let's Help IMGs. We are uh, constantly updating it, a lot of useful blogs from uh, everyone and anyone. We invite you to submit your blog. We do run a WhatsApp group as well and, uh, you know, free WhatsApp group. If you want to join, uh, just text on this number on your screen. Uh, all right, so let's move on. And I think our first speaker is Dr. Rahul Panala. So, Rahul, I am going to give you, uh, you should have the access to the um, as a post or a presenter, but let me know if you want me to move these charts. Uh, I think I have it. So, again, good morning, good evening, everyone. Um, you know, the this just before I get started and we do this, just a few sort of um, um, general things, you know, um, it, it's a big step to take uh, to say, you know, I'm going to, apply for residency, I'm going to do this, um, and, uh, you know, we all sort of understand the the courage it takes and, and the planning and, and you know, uh, to make the decision not to pursue residency where you've gone to medical school but to go to a brand new place and to go through the process. So, um, but like with any anything challenging, I think if you plan well, if you get the help that you need, I think um, that can go a long way in in terms of your chances for success. And I think um, the biggest testament to that are all the the students who are joining you today. And you know, I think um, we've really been you know really fascinated by how well they've they've done. And all credit due to them. So um, so anyway, I think that should give you. I think one of the biggest takeaways from this that we want you to do is to look at them and say, you know, as, as examples of success and to say that you guys can do it. Um, so that, I think, is the biggest takeaway from, from this two hours that you're going to spend here. Now, let's start, um, you know, sort of delving into and discussing some of the issues. So the first question that we'll ask you is, so you're going to apply for the match, you, you, you want to do residency, so what do you think are the most important factors determining what your success is going to be in the match if you're an international medical graduate? So I'll um, sort of let you type in the, uh, you know, so in the chat section, so. So Rahul, uh, I, I'm, I have a poll open, I think you should, do you see a poll on your uh, oh, yeah, screen? Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's oh, wow. let's do this polling. I I thought we'll do this polling and we'll see what people think and then we'll broadcast the uh, results as well. So we'll we'll give them a couple of uh, minutes. You know, what are the things you think are important? Uh, contacts. Yeah, someone is saying Nidhi is saying contacts, which is one of the options, I guess. So, uh, and you can choose more than one option, so I, I set it up as a multiple uh, options. All right, I Are you give it another that? minute. Yeah, 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 I'll, you know, this okay. is uh, real time, so we'll see. Uh, okay, so I think uh, we're all done here. Uh, let me can end the Can poll. everybody see that? I think so. I mean, and, and, and 
and uh, let's see, broadcast and is it visible? No. Hang on. No. Back to the phone. Oh yeah, people can okay. see it. Okay. So okay. Most fascinating Let aspect me... is. One okay. That now I can know. see. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you might feel that way, but um, I think. Uh, the majority of you are on the right track. Um, you know, I think visa is obviously a very, very important issue for you know for for um, for obvious reasons. Um, I think scores very very appropriately are um, you know it's, it's high on your skills. I think in, uh, connections, you'd be surprised. I think your scores and what you do go a lot farther than, um, you know, who you know. So I would say that, yes, if you know people, it can help you open doors and get you interviews or get you observerships, things like that. But at the end of the day, it's what you bring to the table that counts. So it's, it's your interpersonal skills, it's your letters, it's your scores, what you have done. Um, I think U.S. clinical experience is a very, very important thing. And one of the advantages for people, you know, for you all um, who are starting early is to build up that um, as, as you prepare for your match. So um, let's sort of look at some of the data. These are the perceptions that people have. So, um, so if you look at the data, this is for, this is data from the NRMP from <clears throat> about a year, two years ago. And on the green uh, is the percentage of program directors rating these um, criteria um, and, and what they feel are um, important in selecting applicants to interview, not to match, but to interview. To, um, and this is the rating. So if you look at it, your scores are really bad, are the highest factors. Step one, step two scores, what your letters say. So scores and letters are the most important thing, and in in terms of in terms of uh, how they um, select you. But look what's very close: this personal statement, um, and then a whole host of other things like um, you know what your class rank was, and some of that applies more to American graduates, like the dean's letter, things like that. I think for international graduates, the biggest thing is scores how much experience you have in the United States, what your CV says, and what your personal statement says. Um, so obviously Visa is not in here, but Visa can obviously play, play a major role. Um, but that's something that, you know, you can change. But these are all in your capacity to change or to improve. Um, what are the factors in ranking applicants? So the previous, um, graph was, if I'm a program director, what's important to me to, uh, uh, to offer an interview? But well, once I'm interviewing applicants, once I've done the interviews, what are the factors that are important in ranking applicants? You see what's the most important thing is interactions with faculty and interpersonal skills. So all your scores all the work that you've do, done in terms of your medical school, your post-medical school, gets you a seat at the table in terms of, that's what I tell uh, folks, is it, it buys you a seat at the table. But once you have that seat at the table, you have to um, really, what they're looking for is, is this person going to be a good fit in our program? How are they going to interact with my patients? How are they going to interact with other faculty? So those are the things that really make a difference um, in terms of um, whether uh, programs rank a particular candidate or not. And obviously scores play a role, but you see they play a much lower role uh, because what's going to happen is at program X, they're all going to have applicants pretty much in the same score slash uh, credential criteria, and then they're trying to go through a second pass and try to get people who they think would be a good fit for their program. So um, so that's something that you really have to focus on. 
So uh, what our goal here is that, um, you know, we would like to be, um, we would like to help you sort of bring everything together really is, you know, how you put forth the best application, what you say in your personal statement, how do you describe your experiences, whether it's volunteering, professional, personal experiences. For many of you who are doing research, you know, spending a year doing research, how are you going to um, project your research? How are you going to talk about it and things like that? And obviously the interview preparation and for some, um, or for many, you know, when you make the transition to a different country, you go, you have certain gaps in your uh, training. If you have a low score, other flags, how how to best um, to put your best foot forward? I think is is the goal of all of this. So um, let me stop there, right, Pavan? Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Thank you, thank you, Rahul. Uh, all right, so what we wanted to do now was uh, dig deeper into some of the aspects. Let me just uh, widen this a bit. And I know we have a couple of more speakers. Uh, Sri Devi and Nikita have joined. Uh, so Nikita, you, I, I see you on on the screen. So do you want to introduce yourself and before we go to Sri Devi? Hey, Nikita, your audio, we cannot hear. Uh, uh, Sri Devi, are you on? Hi, Pavan, I'm on. Okay, uh, if you want your audio, uh, you know, your audio is obviously there. So do you want to introduce yourself? And if you want, you can, I think I activated your video as well. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Sri Devi. I was with USMLA SRT for March of 2017, and uh, I'm a first year resident at Mount Sinai St. Louis and Roosevelt Hospital in New York, and I'm here to help you all if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, all right, so now what we wanted to do was, uh, I think our, one of the speakers, Nandini, is still not here. Uh, she was on, on um, you know, uh, agenda. So let, let's start with Ravali. Uh, Ravali has, you know, all of them actually have reviewed a lot of PAs and CVs. So, so Ravali, uh, why don't you talk to us about what you see generally the mistakes in personal statements, CVs, and, you know, some of your suggestions, feedback? Mm -hmm. So introduction to CV and PS. Uh, common things that I found last season were, uh, common feedback I had were the CV is the first thing the programs will see about you. That piece of packet represents all the hard work you have done so far. It represents all those years of hardship. So you want to make it reflect that. You want to make it really good, make it to perfection. Some of the most silliest mistakes I saw were not capitalization and very poor grammar skills. And some of the feedback I had were just putting in a little bit more effort, working on it every day, little by little. So you don't get, it, it is very easy to get tired while you're writing a CV. So you just want to work on it every day to make it perfect. And a little more specific details about it were um, putting in details. You see patients every day, but it will be more specific if you say every day I saw approximately 15 patients and if you're from India like me we all go to these rural villages and we do uh, volunteering or we do things related to the SBM community medicine it's better if you say the village name it makes it more personal it makes it more uh, like you actually did something there everybody will have the same entries when it comes to the rural villages, polio campaigns and all. So you want to make it more specific. You want to make it yourself stand out. And rather than uh, saying, I did this, I did that in this rotation, you should say, my responsibilities were this, my responsibilities were that. So when you're done with each entry, read every sentence and think, what more details can I add? or read each of the experience and think, what would a program director think if they read this entry? How will this help me 
stand out. Um, and hobbies are very important, especially for those program directors that are a bit more relaxed. They want to know all about you. So really spend some time in hobbies. If you're going to say, my hobby is traveling, um, you cannot just end it there. You have to say, my favorite place that I've been to so far was this and this. Why? Because I like the culture, I like the cuisines, whatever. Um, just make it very perfect. Don't be lazy when you're writing your CV because, once again, it reflects everything that you've done so far. When it comes to personal statements, when I was writing personal statement for my match, I found it harder than studying for steps. To be absolutely honest, it was very hard for me. So I, you know, I just took a step back and thought, what do you really need a personal statement to have? What, what is the purpose of it? So CV is more uh, career oriented. Personal statement is getting to know you as a person. When you are a program director, you are reading a personal statement, you don't want to see the same stuff you saw on the PS. You don't want to know about the observerships or the rotations that the student has been to. You want to know what, what are the life events that evolved him, that made him what he is. Um, the personal statement has to be very personalized, meaning that it should, you know, I want to know you as a person. What inspired you to do the medicine? What inspired you to come to U.S.? Um, would be recommended to include a personal experience that changed you. Also, another format you could use is your journey. So you started out med school, and then you studied for your steps. What inspired you to study for your steps? After you came here, what inspired you to continue to pursue residency? Um, some of the common mistakes I saw in the personal statement are uh, a very weak first paragraph. Everyone who reads an essay starts out reading the first paragraph, right? So you want to make it very strong, very, um, very interesting so that the reader will want to go on reading it. They want to know what happened next. So the first paragraph has to be very strong, very, um, it should be very encouraging. And um, most important thing, do not include your uh, observership information. Another thing, uh, one more thing about CV, I saw last year that some of the students wrote about the observership. They wrote about their attending. My attending is this. She studied in Yale Medical School. She graduated from Harvard. I'm like, is this your CV or is this your attending CV? So you got to be really careful when it comes to your CV. You know, praise yourself, not your attendings. And I will end it there. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Avali. Um, okay. Uh, Sri Devi, are you on? Yeah, I'm on, Pavan. Okay. So, uh, you know, what we wanted to talk, have Sri Devi talk about was the major um, mistakes she may have seen in the interviews or overall how she's seen IMG's tackle the interviews. And then, of course, I'll, I'll open it up to the wider panel. So, Sri Devi, uh, all yours. Thanks a lot, Pavan. So, um, I was thinking about my agenda that Pavan presented to me, and I am, you know, being on both sides right now, once as a, on the interview trail and right now in residency, when interviews, interviewees did come to interview, we were given the task to take interviewees for a tour of the hospital and closely interact with them, and I did that multiple times. So I, I believe I'm able to give you a few points. The first thing that always struck me, even when I was dealing with some students in the SMLA SRC panel and also when I actually saw students interviewees at the hospital was the tell me about yourself section. Most of the time, tell me about yourself section, people instinctually talk about only the USMLE journey, and that's a big, big mistake. The person sitting across does not want to hear only about your USMLE journey. They want to know who you are, and that is why they say, tell me about yourself. It's, it's always ideal if you talk about where you come from, like Vavali mentioned, where you found your passion, what drives you, and very briefly about your USMB journey and always, always end it with what your future aspirations are. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't have to present like very fancy aspirations like I want to be like a cardiologist, <coughs> an interventional, nothing like that. You can say that 
my current interest is in cardio or VI or hemonc or whatever it is. Or you can even be truthful and say, I have not decided, but I'm going to keep an open mind. But it should not only be about medicine. It, it should include some details about yourself, like who you are as a person. Are you outgoing or are you someone who likes to read? If you are outgoing, what kind of activities do you do? And this kind of information really helped me because in one interview I attended in Chicago, I happened to say that I do read books. And the interviewer in a sort of test asked me, what, what is the latest one you read? And I told her. And she told me, oh, I love the book. And she actually had the book in her desk. And she showed it to me and we spent the entire time talking about it. So if you put forward the other aspects of your personality as well, that really creates an impression about you. So one mistake would be just restricting your tell me about yourself section, which is where you really sell yourself by not restricting to your US MLA journey. The other part, other mistakes that I've seen is people talking about scores to each other while sitting around the room. Now, you have to understand that, again, this is something new for me because when I, me and my classmates were asked to sit with the candidates and engage them, the chief residents did mention us like, you know, just watch how they interact and they interact with you and report to us of any red flags. Now, we weren't told what red flags to look for. They just said, you'll know it when you see it. And so one red flag that a couple of colleagues and I felt were some you know, some people who discuss scores with each other, some people who are pointedly asking others about their scores and comparing where they got interviews. That is absolutely not an appropriate thing to do while you are sitting for an interview. You know, keep your scores and everything to yourself. Talk to others about how it has been, how your journey has been, how do you find here. You know, you have a million other things to talk about. Don't go on a comparison spree while you are sitting over there. That is something I felt. Another um, mistake is asking about duty hours to attending. Now, when I was on the interview trail, when some attending was giving a presentation or the program director, people would just jump and ask about duty hours. Do you think your program exceeds duty hours? And you could visibly see that the program director was affronted. You know, if you do want to ask these questions because you received a feedback like that, please reserve these questions for the residents who take you around for the interview field, not the program director or the associate program director. And um, finally, another mistake that I can think of is if you are too silent and not engaging and talking with your fellow interviewees, the residents who come to engage you, you know, that will also stand out because the impression it creates is that you're not probably going to be a fun person to work with. So then why should we rank you high enough? So Pavan, these are the common mistakes that I felt should, should and could be avoided. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sri Devi. And as we open up uh, the panel, you know, we'll, we'll discuss some of these. By the way, I think... Uh